Incoming wounded. We're approaching your position now. Captain Connolly, the transport has arrived. Hurry! He's bleeding out. Get this thing clamped off. Major, help me get his shirt off. We were on standard patrol. It's open terrain. They came out of the trees from the west about 160 yards out. He ran to the front and got hit with an IED. Oh, we got thoracic abdominal, pelvic injury. Yeah, I have pretty good, huh? Prep 10 units of RBC. Hey, buddy, you're gonna be okay. You're in good hands. All right, let's move. Hey, Rios. You didn't have to do all this just to get my number, you know? You could have just asked. I thought this would be more dramatic, you know? Hang in there, Rios. Today we're here with Russell Ashton of the United Animal Protection Agency and we're going to speak about the major passing of a recent Title 23. Good morning, Trent. We at the UAPA want to enforce the importance of this title as it protects our animals from terrible and potentially dangerous situations. I understand, but what I'm concerned about, anybody driving by saying, I saw thin animals, and that's enough to launch an investigation on any rancher's herd. It's the animal's well-being that comes first and foremost, period. Let's take a look at this sick horse. Of course. But I'm not sure what to do. I've never seen something like this. That just don't look good. Uh-oh. Let's get back to work. Good interest. We have local veterinarians with enforcement power. Good morning, boys. Josh Falvey, Fergus Falls Daily. What brings you out so early? Well, Sunday peace coming out in a couple weeks. All ranchers have fared through the winter. These hog Rafferty's horses? Yeah. And they'll be coming through winter just fine. We'll get them there. Uh-huh. Hogs in the barn with the sheriff now going over their compliance. They wintered well. And grass is coming just around the corner. Yeah. Remember that for your Sunday peace. I will do. We've got a bail for you. Thanks for no thanks. Hmm. Winter's been hard on all of us, Roger. I understand, Hogue. We all do. I know. We're gonna get some meat on those bones. Possible heart attack, send an ambulance. Second man down, fatal gunshot wound. Possible accident, probable suicide. If this is the wrong number, I'm gonna hunt you down. I take it you're still 6,719 miles away from me? No, actually, I'm on the beach. Yeah, I'm in the sand. Sipping on a daiquiri, watching all those sexy men surf. Listen, your dad is fine, but he collapsed yesterday. What happened? Heart attack? I was quickly reminded I'm not family. I, I tried, they wouldn't tell me squat. Did they release him? In a few days. You better talk to your CEO and get home. I mean, isn't there a private nurse that can take care of him or something? Yeah, her name is Jana Connolly. When 
I died, let the wolves enjoy my bones When I die, let me go When I die, let the wolves enjoy my bones When I die, let me go That'll be 550. Oh, um, do you have another one by any chance? I just gave out my last single. Wait a second. You, you want me to give you a, a 10 and a 1? Yeah, if you'd give me another one, I can give you a 5 and 2 quarters back. Listen, I'm just out of singles. Otherwise, I have to give you 18 quarters. No. Let me get this straight. You want me to give you a 10 and a 1, mm -hmm. making that uh, $11 for an energy drink and a bag of trail mix? Yeah. Are you playing me? I'll just take it out of the tip jar. Excuse me, officer, um, are you Carl Hagen by any chance? What's that? Yeah, I knew you was PK, the, uh, that preacher's kid. God, I never picked you in law enforcement or, or grown up to be sheriff. I'm Deputy Carl Hagen. Do we know each other? Yeah, I'm, um, Janet Connolly. We went to high school together. Oh, shit. Janet Banana? You remember me, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. God, Paxton County Sheriff suits you, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, deputy, um, it'll be a while till I'm sheriff. Right. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna head up to the ranch, so. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah, it was good to see you, too. Deputy Carl. <laughs> I'll see you around, banana. See you around. <laughs> like you miss you. Sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to start you. He does ranch hand, Brock. Brock McCarty. Oh. No, you just, uh, you caught me off guard. I'm Janet Connolly. I know. I was expecting you at some point. We just didn't know when. Yeah. Yeah. How is he? Dell. He's been home for about a week or so. Gets tired, as expected. I have to force him to sit in that old chair by the TV. He's got to learn to leave all the heavy lift and others for a while, though. Sure he doesn't like that. Oh, no. Sure he doesn't. Old Jack likes a body brush. Likes the soft bristles. Isn't that right, boy? There you go. That's a good boy. I trust you. He knows I mean him no harm. They're here about three months now. Just getting to know each other. Isn't that right, Jackie boy? Well, it looks like they've both been in good hands.
revenue with the state building up for a year over year. Some of the citizens of the state of North Dakota are wondering why do we then need to keep paying property taxes? Makes sense. Makes sense. So they're offering a ballot measure to say we're going to do away with, we're going to ban property taxes in the state of North Dakota. So let's talk about that. Do we think that is a step in the right direction? Welcome home. In terms of budget, and the assumption that's being made is that you wouldn't have ah. these revenues in other ways, whether it's some transactional taxes, if it's income taxes, whatever the case may be. Usually when you eliminate one tax, you have to find the other another. But on the core principle here is that you can't lose your home because of the tax bill. Make them kind of make some credit that You went away and grew up on me. Yeah, I guess I did. So the doctor said atrial flutter? You know, we gotta be careful about that. That can be dangerous. If it you was a flutter. It was nothing. I was overdoing it with Tom and hell old man Rafferty decided he didn't want any more of winter and when the gun went off, it caught me off guard is all. You have any family left? I think he outlived everyone around him. Big ranch, isolation like that, old man, Dakota winners. You put all that together, a man will do some desperate things. Yeah. I want to go lay in that new trawl. Sounds good. Look who's up. Yeah. Oh, I hate to break it to you, but you're not going to walk to the bathroom until we go over your meds. Check your BP. Calvary has arrived. That's right. Half awake, but fully operational. Morning, Dale. Good morning, Roger. Deputy? This is Connolly. Do you remember Jenna? It's been a while, but I sure do. Carl said he ran into you coming to town last night. Yeah. Paxson sure hasn't changed much. Well, now, big captain in the Army. Medic on leave. Just came home to help me with a few things around the ranch. I appreciate your service. You do Paxton proud. Thank you. Appreciate yours as well. It's Brock. <laughs> My ranch hand. What brings you all the way out here, Roger? Can you walk with me a minute, Dell? Well, it's been nice having your daughter back after all this time. Yeah, it is. She wasn't too keen on coming back to Paxton. We got some things to work out, but it's good. Yeah. So I know you didn't come all this way to check on old Dale Conley. The old man's suicide shook up things pretty good in Bismarck. Oh? The UAPA got wind of hole, got out to his ranch, and did an inspection of his herd. You know, you were there. Yeah, his animals came out of winter all right. Hell, he's no skinnier than I am coming out of winter. <laughs> yeah, well, there's new directives coming down the pike from the state's attorney's office because... It's called the Title 23. Spot inspections. Felony counts for noncompliance. What? It's the vets that have the enforcement power, Dale. Courts can act without informing owners, taking livestock based solely on someone's complaint. I don't know of one rancher, not around here, who neglects or abuses his animals. But I do see why you came out here now. 
Yeah, so you got some fencing issues, uh, cracked uh, tank heater, and found some more of the barn stacks. Yeah, appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for your time, Dale. We'll be seeing you. <clears throat> what was all that about? About the reputation of our ranch is what? The sale of our horses yearling. They depend on it. If we lose that, we lose everything. These fixes are doable, Brock and I can... Oh, it's about more than that. I've had that same list for Brock for two months that the deputy handed us today. That should have been done by now. There's no excuse for that. I pay him enough. Well, Del, in all fairness, Brock's been pulling double duty since you've been laid up. So. Just leave that girl. And he should have been pulling triple duty. Horses and sheep, they don't wait for somebody to come around. Unless you've forgotten how to ranch. Forgotten? Forgotten how I went to work when your most precious ranch was at stake? Forgotten how you leaned on me at 14 to fill her shoes? <laughs> Shit, you know, I didn't kill her, Del, but you sure treat me like a dead. Yeah, let's not have a conversation about this. You're right. And I haven't been a girl in a long time. So the sheriff came by to talk about you know, fencing issues, couple gaps by the road, field fixes, like normal post to winter stuff. Your team. And he got really upset about it. And so he started pushing buttons, I started pushing back, and then all of a sudden it's like I'm 14 again. Just stuck in that tiny little box. Didn't take long, did it? No. Look, I'm sorry, I just thought you should be here. No, listen, when you called, I was coming up 36 hour shifts. So. He's working on this young guy, just choking in a pool of his own blood. I mean, I didn't even grab the paddles, I just, I knew it was over. I just held his hand, talking about the date we're gonna go on someday. Oh, well, where are you gonna take me? You gonna dinner? A movie? Don't want to die. He shut his eyes and died on the table. We're losing blood. Give me another clamp. Guys, come on, hurry. Back, back at the house with Dow, just so far apart, like I couldn't see him either. <sighs> Take it, sorry. Hello. Okay, I'll be right there. No, you can't leave me. Gelding got caught on a fence halfway over it. We're not pretty good. Oh. Just breathe. All right, you and Dell both work in your stubborn ways back home again. You know. When you're coming in for that kind of approach, it's always a little bumpy. Fireball shots on me. Oh, uh, thanks, but I'm okay. Wouldn't want you pulling me over. You know, buzz driving is drunk driving. <laughs> no, I would never do that. 
I wouldn't do that to Jana Banana for a morning, maybe. Oh, you just keep calling me that, don't you? You know, I love the songs you put on the jukebox, Jana. Dickie Peterson. The High Lonesome. Oh, watch your step there, girl. Oh, lordy. Fiery. That's that's what I remember about you, is you were you were fiery. Oh, sweetheart, um. What? Ever seen the movie Braveheart? Oh. oh, I love that movie. Starting to look a lot like William Moss. <laughs> I got a bunch of blue chocolate on my face. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think I better go home now. I still like the songs you put on the jukebox, Banana. Bye, Carl. Paxton's finest. No, without firing a shot. My compliments. Yeah, it's a gift. I happen to work with a lot of men. My father's one of them. You mind if I join you? Yes. I won't breathe on you, I promise. Unless, of course, you want me to, then naturally I'm open for negotiations. It's kind of sad drinking alone. Oh, I'm not sad. Just alone. I was talking about me. Saddest, loneliest cowboy in Paxton County. Might help if I could tell you a joke. Ooh, really? All right, let's hear it, cowboy. All right. Uh, horse walks into a bar. Looks kind of lonely. Orders a couple mojitos. Bartender says, Hey, why the long face? Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's the stupidest joke I've ever heard. <laughs> you should try stand up. Really? No. <laughs> uh, can we get to it, whatever Braveheart was? Uh, name's Matt. Jana. My friends call me. Let me ask you something. This whole easy-going southern cowboy thing worked for you? Well, ma'am, I have no idea what you're talking about. But uh, I like where it's going. All right, fine, cowboy. I can do drinks. But anything else ain't happening. <laughs> oh. I think Deputy Carl dodged a bullet with you. Please stop talking. Take my pants off.
Oh, mm, you know, I make a mean bacon and egg scramble. God, that sounds so good. Um, I, I got a head, but thank you. Dr. Morell, field report. The property in disrepair. Recommending further investigation. Hi, thanks for calling. You've reached Marla Orton. Leave a message. Oh, God, you were in deep trouble for leaving me last night. Please call me back as soon as you can. Thank you. Which one was it? Old draft horse in the first stall. His ears were hanging down. We checked his nose and nasal passages. A lot of discharge. What's that mean? Oh, possible herpes virus. Too early for Potomac horse fever. He's past vet intervention. Should we tag the foal? Well. What other horses have been near this stall? to tell you, Dale. That said, the virus is contagious. And now the foal has to be quarantined. So, it's bad luck. Jack was Adeline's horse, Roger. She had him since he was a foal. Yeah, I know. But doing the right thing is rarely doing the easy thing. Looking out for the rest of your herd, now that's doing the right thing. I know it is. I wouldn't ask you to do this unless I do it myself for you. Get so sick, huh? I'm gonna put you up in the back quarter. By that little knoll you like so much in summer's game. But I won't ever visit that I won't think about what you meant to us. I'll have it written. Here lies the one that loved us all. and in turn was loved as much. What's the matter? Where's Brock? What the fuck? Where's the shit?
I'm sorry. I should have been here. I'm sorry. Get you more tea? No, I'm okay. Thank you. They took sugar too? They did. Do we even know where? <sighs> they said they'd let us know. That's comforting. New guidelines. I mean, lack of care for livestock, pasture too short, feed purchase records, inaccessible roads. I mean, they're making it sound like accused criminals. And then I took that out of Jack's nostril. Send it out right away when I get the results. I'll come out and check on some animals. Just don't get it. The results of this new law. You know, piss off the wrong neighbor and cause you a lot of trouble. A person can falsely accuse a rancher of abuse, causing them to go broke just to prove their innocence. Cost them nothing, cost you the ranch. No wonder the old man killed himself. How's... Mr. Beautiful Man in the bunkhouse when you're talking about how's he taking it? Oh, he's not. Yeah, he just up and left. You get what you pay for. God, I need someone out there Del can really count on. Oh, wait, I might have a guy. He was just in here for a client looking for a place to work and sleep. Really? Yeah, go to Mr. Mom's diner. His name's Hudson. I'll call him and we'll explain everything so we know. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Of course. Oh, but I don't do it. I love you. Good luck. Thank you. Um, can I also get the check when you have check? No, but I did run into the guy that took me to the Ritz R&R. No. Yeah. Yeah, he's sitting at the counter and he's not happy. God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> the only thing worse than waking up with a guy on the first day is seeing him on the second. <laughs> uh, what's your guy look like again? Uh, Hudson, blonde hair, blue eyes, about six foot one. Oh, and he kind of can't grow a beard. I gotta go. Hey, your last name wouldn't by any chance be Hudson, would it? Oh. Wow, it's all yours? My family's. It's beautiful. I used to have 160 horses at some point. I was a kid. And Del hired this Brock guy. He just took off. Too much fun, I guess. Yeah, I've known some ranch hands like that. They like the idea of being a cowboy, just not the real work. This Brock guy, though, he might take the cake. All along your fence line there, you got a bunch of bailing wire patch jobs. Anybody even trying would replace the whole length. Do you think it was deliberate? Well, I don't want to talk bad about a stranger, but... All right. Well, I got to make a decision. So, we got a deal? Money's fine, bunkhouse is fine, but uh, I do have one request. What's that? 
Next time you got an itch and need scratching, and you come and knock them, I'm going to ask you to know my full name before we commence. Oh, a cowboy with principles, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're going to make me pay for this, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The mucus test came back. Old Jack was sick, all right. What was it? EHV1, equian herpes virus. Really contagious. Well, we've never had that before. It happens. I feel bad, but you might have died anyway. You, you did the right thing, though. This horse is fine. What happens next? Let's make it official, right? Uh, I'll assess the entire herd, blood samples, everything. I can set up a, a feeding and warming plant to get these animals back into shape. Here you go, Sheriff. Thank you. Carl, why don't you go over there and casually see what you can find out? Yeah, who is that? Oh, hi, Carl. You're getting some feed, huh? Yep. Knocking down that list you gave us. Don't want to be caught short next time you come out. Yeah, good deal. I'm Matt Hudson. Nice meeting you. Yeah, of course. Uh, Deputy Carl Hagen. Yeah, Matt's our new ranch hand. Are we picking up where Brock left off? Yeah, what, what happened to him? He just left, no idea. Found a better situation for himself, I guess. Hmm. Huh. Well, I appreciate the compliance. Be sure to let the sheriff know that. What'd you find out? Well, looks like Miss Connolly's hired a new ranch hand, Matt Hudson. New ranch hand. Well, good for her. Yeah, I, I knew her back in high school, but uh, I never paid much attention to her or anything like that. Like how you handled yourself there, Carl. You're learning. Subtly, but you're learning. Hey! Hey! We got the list of conditions from the state attorney. Underweight horses? That's debatable. Pins repair, brush clearing, standing water. Yeah, we've seen that already. Wait, replace... Bad wiring in the water trough tank heater. Where is that? It's up in the north field. Yeah, sure enough, looks like you got exposed electrical wiring. I've seen animals electrocuted by this. Oh, thank God this one's dry. Looks like ice got in there and corroded the connections. Well, how did they know? Well, everybody's got trough heaters. If you don't, they're... No, no, no. I mean... Did you see Dr. Merle and her people come out here? Or the sheriff? The panel's rusted shut. Nobody's been here. Well, the panel's rusted shut and there's no tire marks or shoe prints. How do they know? Don't you see? It was Brock. The inspectors didn't go out to the north field, but it's right here in the state attorney's own stationery. You think this Brock guy's tied all the way up to the state's attorney's office? No. But we know the sheriff is. You got no way of proving that. I think we need some help. Legal help. Del Connolly, I'm his daughter Jana. I'm picking up from Dr. Kruger. Thank you.
everything okay? Just drive. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to see what's happening here. It's this new statute. They couldn't get it through the voters, so they did an end run. Shoved it right through the legislature. But why? It's these animal rights groups like the UAPA. They have a lock on the state. All the laws that are being implemented, offering training to law enforcement, they moved into North Dakota after pushing this new law. But why would they want to take ranchers' horses? It doesn't make any oh, sense. Oh, well, lots of reasons. They'll tell you it's because they're taking care of the animals. But the truth is, those horses are worth cash whether they're healthy or not. Okay, Vin, so what can she do? Well, you need to show them you're complying, first of all. And as soon as I get that vet assessment from your pal, Dr. Marla, the care plan for the horses, yeah. you and I can walk it over to the courthouse ourselves. That'll buy you some time and you get that ranch in order. Okay. We had an agreement, Tom. Tom? Tom! Tom Garner just hung up on me. He says he doesn't have any hay for us this year. You have an idea why? Now listen, Dell, we've known each other a long time. 35 years, Tom. I told you, Pa, Jenna. I just don't have any hay to sell. Tom. You and I pulled hay for hold, what, two, three weeks ago? There's plenty of hay there. Since then, I sold to a young feller over at Mandan. He came, took everything I had. Paid top dollar, too. Is this actually the truth of it, Mr. Gardner? Is this why you won't sell your hay to us? People will think it's your hay that contaminated the Connolly Ranch. Jack got put down for EHV-1 had nothing to do with the product coming from your ranch. Ruth, I got this. Go on. Tom. These people, your friends, deserve the truth. You own that. It's Title 23. Everybody's spooked. All the ranchers are hiding from the sheriff and his posse. Tom's scared that what happened to you could happen to us, too. Sheriff visits, articles. The value of our stock goes down. Reputation's everything, Dale. You know that. Any whiff of fever or some problem with our hay, we're finished. First they want to take my damn livestock. Now they want to take my friends. See if we can get some buyers lined up. Thank you. Okay, so you're saying the court can act without notice? Do you know how hard we've been working out there? They could just show up? I'm going to prepare an injunction in case they do want to move on the ranch. Now, if they do come, that's all we got. So you better hope it holds up. I'm impressed. Your mother taught me some things. Ow! Thank you. We'll just take Marla's assessment on over here to the clerk's office. Right down here? Yep.
I just thought we'd get a little color back in here. Mom's favorites. How she loved these. You know, she used to put them in the planter box and I'd pick them and take them to school with me. <laughs> hey, I made a lot of friends. You have your mother's hands. I didn't know that. I miss her, don't you? Every hour of every day. Morning specials, we have pumpkin spice pancakes and maple bacon potato hash. I'll give you a moment to decide. Thank you. You know, it's the sugar that raises cholesterol that gives people heart disease. So, Russell, how can the sheriff's department help the UAPA? You know all these ranchers in these parts, personally? Most of them. And if I don't, I'm happy to introduce myself. How much livestock is here? couple thousand head, anyway. It's a few pesos. More than a few, Mr. Ashton. When those horses are shipped across the border, no back tags, no certificates. It's clean. I'll have to get firm with a few of them in my own way, but we're going to need that political cover. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting. Have you decided? I think we have. <laughs> oh, wow. This is really something. Yeah, it is. You know, sometimes in between shifts, I'll go out by myself and look up at the stars. Think of this place right here. You know, I think everybody thinks about home when they want a little comfort. Yeah, it's not always like that. But even though I ran from this place with everything I had, I'd do anything to save it. I don't know if I've ever had a place like that. Where are you from? We haven't really covered that. Nowhere really. A bit of a nomad. I know the feeling. There was a place near Elko, Nevada. It's called the Ruby Mountains. You ever... No. It's unreal. It's like you're staring at a dream or something. In fact, those stars look a lot like these. Sounds romantic. <laughs> you ever take anybody up there? My brother. <laughs> One summer we were both ranching near Elko, so we... Met up, hung out, just stared at the mountains, stars. You know, if I had to pick a spot that I'd call home, I, I guess it'd be there. With him. So one time we took in this Afghan girl. My brother had been hit either by us or by them, I don't remember, but... We took her in... She would have these fits, inconsolable. And one night, we took her out. It's just us. We looked up at the stars and she stopped crying. She recognized home. Bet she was thinking about her mother. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's not the place that makes home, but the people. Maybe it is the people. It's nomads. To home.
so early jana it's happening they're on the move to the ranch i'm on my way Shit. dad don't wake up Fuck. this is ben hi they're on the way okay when you get the seizure order you take a picture from your phone i'll try to buy you some time okay Come and take the horses. Heard you're ready to sail a few horses. Just make sure they're clean animals is all. It's those spot inspections we talked about. Looks like you already made up your mind, Roger. registered here in Paxton County to corroborate any action that may be taken. We're we looking at your paperwork, Dr. Morrell. Lord Raven. Mr. Connolly. After checking the horses, my suspicions have been confirmed. Here's the notice of seizure. The hearing will be in not more than 10 business days from today. Under what authority are you taking my animals? Under my authority as the vet of this county. They'll be well cared for. Let me see that. They can't take these animals with a seizure order. It's incomplete. This is bullshit, Victoria. I'm afraid you're going to need a judge to tell us otherwise. All right, let's round them up. Someone check the barn. Oh, hey, Judge Williams. Nice morning, isn't it? Do you mind if I bend your ear for a second? Carl! Carl! Why are you doing this? Straight out the mares. Let's go. Push around local ranchers, people you know in your entire life. Yeah, yeah, I'm just doing my job, Miss Connolly. Just doing what I'm told. It's not the preacher's son I used to know. Let's pick up the pace. Here goes the first trailer. duties. You have a court order based on old information. It's not too valid, Sheriff. I handed Marla's findings into the courthouse myself. I'm gonna arrest you right now for obstruction. All of you. How'd that be? You don't want to answer that. I don't want to answer what? 
That's your judge. You're not taking our horses. Hello. We handed that paperwork into the cook ourselves. There's no way it just went missing. Well, every time we get our heads up, they just push them back down again. Well, I'll dig through the public county records, see if they let anything slide between crossing their T's and dotting their I's. I can ask some other vets in other counties. I'm sure somebody like Victoria Morell has a few skeletons in her closet. <laughs> yeah. I keep thinking about old Ho. Thank you. He just didn't have anybody to help him. Yeah. And no one knows where his horses went. I, uh, I read the hit piece the Gazette did on your dad. To say the least. Well, I appreciate you coming up to Fergus Falls this morning. A long drive. What can I do for you? Well, I wanted to talk to you about the article you wrote on Hug Rafferty. The rancher? Yeah. I'm curious. You never say what happened to his horses. Oh, um, after the coroner's office was done, they were just hauled off somewhere. I noticed you didn't get a quote. You just referred to the coroner's report. I mean, no quote from Sheriff Boswick. It was there either. And? Well, a dead man in his barn and the seizure of his horses? You're scared of something. You weren't there. But you were. You saw something and your article doesn't account for it. Please. Oh, fuck me. It was more than just a suicide. See, I'd gotten an anonymous tip that Ho Grafferty was neglecting his herd. Shit, shit. The other ranchers were feeding the thin animals, your father and Tom Gardner. Josh Falvey, Fergus Falls Daily. The horses weren't neglected. They were a little skinny from winter, that's all. Your pa told me that Rafferty was in the barn. I didn't think anything of it. Took a few pictures of the ranch. Wanted to get a quote from Mr. Rafferty. Everyday stuff. So I walked over. I looked back. I saw your your dad in the field and Mr. Garner at the truck still getting the hay out. I went inside the barn. I saw the rancher and the sheriff over by the window. The old man was shaking, pleading with Sheriff Bostwick. Felt like I was intruding, so I stepped behind the tractor. It's the cold. It's all the stress. It's living way the hell out of here in Cottonwood all by yourself. Then the sheriff started to work on the old man. Work on him real good. The wife's gone. Yeah, yeah. The kids have lost oh. interest. It was more than the horse the sheriff was after. And a hell of a lot of work to do for him. Then I saw him hand the old man his gun. A lot of sick animals. Everything I ever worked for, Roger. I know, Hogan. I thought he was going to put down the mare in the stall. All the stress will be gone. No more pain. You were in the barn. <clears throat> I stepped out before the sheriff could piece together that I may have seen the whole thing. I ran to where your father collapsed. What, you didn't want to go to the authorities? I checked his record. 
decorated military service, no one else to corroborate his word against mine. The gun was in the man's hands. The sheriff said he was there to help him put down a horse. Caught him off guard. <laughs> you pick. And the horses? Um, this lady, Dr. Morrell, shows up. She begins collecting horses, separating them into different trailers. That's the research file I put together when I began to dig in, but uh, nothing went beyond that, I'm afraid. This guy. Is his name Brock McCarty? Um, a man named Sam Mansfield. And he worked for Rafferty? He did, but he quit by the time I'd gotten out there. If, um, if I can be of any more help to you, let me know. Thank you. Okay, Mansfield, Mansfield. They had to submit Dr. Morell's bona fides to the court as part of her assessment, right? Well, maybe the sheriff knows something about that. Let's leave him out of this for right now. Are you sure? Yeah. Here it is. Dr. Morell is Sam Mansfield as part of her old practice in Lehman County. So Brock is connected to Morell. They're probably still working together. No, it's bigger than that. We're missing something. Like, what are they doing with these horses? Well, any of you all ever hear of a Blue Orchid Ranch? Mm-mm. No. Mm. Boy. There's a bunch of paperwork here the Sheriff's Department filed before the seizure order. And on this transport slip, looks like Deputy Carl moved some of the horses to a Sarah Wingate at a Blue Orchid Ranch. And here's the address. Separating the studs from the others. Well, good bloodline goes for 3500 The rest are probably getting shipped out for processing. 
Holy shit. Sarah Wingate looks an awful lot like Victoria Morrell. That's how they're doing it. Morrell's operating as Sarah Wingate to get these horses shipped. Oh my god. Oh my god, I see sugar. You're keeping your ear, thank god. Is she okay? Yeah, she looks fine. Okay. How do we prove all this? Well, we know one guy who's part of transporting horses here. Hey, Carl. You had a uniform today. You got a day off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, day off. Yeah. You're drinking this. Thank you. Listen, I, I saw you sitting over here and I just wanted to apologize for unloading at you on the ranch. You got a job to do. I should respect that. It's way out of line. Can I get you another one, Carl? Yeah. Sure. Why not? Take another one on my tab. Sure. I suppose I'd feel the same way you do. If I were in your shoes. Ranchers all over, they're pissed off. Yeah. How many? Well, Rafferty ain't the first one. It's far from it. I mean, it's not like I'm new to this, right? I took the classes at my community college for law enforcement. I'm ready. I was at least. Uh... No, Carl, come on. You're a good deputy. Really, honestly, I don't know how you do it. It's. God, that Victoria Morrell. She tends to ride part and parcel with the sheriff, doesn't she? That lady, she. She's a cold piece of work. You think she's after Dell personally? Nah, she don't care about no one but herself. Fact is, your old man just isn't worth as much as 70 horses. Yeah, well, speaking of horses... Nah, she don't even care that I have to run these papers all the way down to Linden. Uh, I mean, can't they just email that shit? What am I, the Pony Express? Not Linden. Why so far is Linden? Yeah, sure, it's got me doing it two or three times a week. Your satellite office is out there by the bowling alley, and it takes me about an hour just to get back. You work hard, Carl.
Matt! Matt, if you... Hey! Hey, what did I tell you about protocol? Sorry, I'm not here for that, dummy. Here, get dry. Maybe I'll tie. Okay, so how in the hell did you get all this? Dr. Merle's field office? Dr. Merle's field office? Yeah, and look at this. Here's an assessment for a horse fire in Colorado. And now it reads glowing ratings. Okay, okay, so she's confiscating the horses illegally, messing with the paperwork, selling them off for herself. Yeah, and look. Here's the bill of sale for the Rafferty horses. Mexico. Yeah, and North Canada. These horses were sold illegally, and look who signed it, Sheriff Boswick. Oh, shit. Fuck. What is this, Roger? Hey, Sheriff. It's not going to be any trouble here. Good. Yo, Connolly. You're under arrest for multiple counts of felony animal abuse and neglect. What? I'm sorry, Dale. You have to read his rights. Turn around. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You cannot afford an attorney or provide one for Dad. you. Do you have any questions? Do you understand your rights? Yeah. I'm getting back. So I thought it was absolute genius setting up the satellite office out there. Huh? Yeah, we're clear out to Linden County. So the state's attorney's general's office is preparing the affidavit as we speak. Thank you. As long as Dell goes for it. So this is the model moving forward now that we have political support. Exactly. Exactly. Carl, thank you. Good. You get the door on the way out. Yeah. You, uh... You don't need anything else? Just the door, Carl. Thanks. Where'd you get the prom king? No one got into him. I want you with us in the end of the day. Hey. There you are. How's my dad? He all right? Hey, he's a little tired, a little shaken. Bail's been set. He'll walk today. And it looks like they want to make a deal. Yeah. Look at these. Yeah? Seizure orders, livestock assessments, shipping documents, signatures, it's all there. You're kidding. Yeah. They're giving these horses new paperwork, washing their titles, and either keeping the best ones for themselves or to sell later. So the sheriff's getting a nice cut. Where did you get these? Huh. A bit absconded? Is that a legal term? Oh. These are completely inadmissible. Come on. Yeah. Well, who cares? At least we know the well, truth, and that's a damn good place to start. All right. Let's go. Uh, excuse me, but where's the state's representative? I'm Russell Ashton, United Animal Protection Agency. We've been given the authority from the state to act in this matter today. We provide oversight for local law enforcement cases like these. Okay, well, it's your dime. Let's hear it. We're not heartless, Mr. Connolly. I mean, we understand. It's been a tremendous emotional and financial strain, both on you and the ranch. The settlement can end all of this today, right now. So you're offering a deal. Okay, look, the state will drop the felony charges if Mr. Connolly will accept the lesser charge. Okay, well, what would that be? Class A to Class C misdemeanor, animal endangerment. It's going to mean the uh, forfeiture of your animals, Dale. And I know it's bad, but uh, any future livestock will be limited to, what, five animals or less. You want me to stop ranching? That's what you're asking? So 
this is how you do it. I mean, to date, you haven't told us where you've taken our foal. Or the horses of other ranchers. You've done nothing but stonewall. I came home from serving my country because my father was sick. And I found the town I grew up in even sicker. Good men and lifelong friends turning on each other out of fear. The fear you've caused. Now this land, to make something out of it is hard enough, Mr. Ashton. Something I'm assuming you know nothing about. And then you come in here with all the Title 23s you can write and set out to destroy away a life. And more importantly, the families that have been here for generations. So, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna pass on your oh so very generous deal. Thank you, by the way. Bail's been set. Bail's walking out of here today. Well, gentlemen, uh, looks like we'll be seeing you in court, doesn't it? Harper Lee couldn't have said it better herself. I'm still shaking. Now what? Well, we know what the truth is. We just gotta find a way to let it out. Legally. Sheriff, you better pull something out of your ass, because if you don't, we are all going down. I'm at the end of my rope, Roger. Then the sheriff started to work on the old man. Work on him real good. Nothing to be shamed about. Comes a time and age. Best not to be a burden. And I saw him hand the old man his gun. Closure. Failure. Failure. you can be. Oh. 
Okay. I'm not going to jail because of you! Sheriff, we're just getting started. Hello? Josh, it's Jana Connolly. Hey. Come to the Connolly Ranch. I, if I'm right, I think the rest of your story is about to be written. Oh, okay, I, I'm in the area. I... God, you're predictable. <laughs> Looks like you gave Brock all he could take. Doesn't have to be this way, Miss Conley. You have no idea what your ranch is really worth. A casualty here or there, just part of the learning curve. That's all. Plenty to go around. Just sidestep the paperwork and you're sitting on a gold mine. Quine herpes virus, huh? Clever. You got it all figured out, don't you? 
Hired hand lays the groundwork. Gets the horses sick. <gasps> Victoria Morell can accuse the ranchers of neglect, and your hands are tied. You got no choice but to take the livestock. Make a pretty penny, of course. I'm gonna need that vial. Okay. And how Grafferty? Old man's time had come, is all. <sighs> That's not the whole story, is it, Sheriff? Now, what do you intend by that, Miss Connolly? Well, he did your dirty work for you. You had the perfect alibi. You witnessed a suicide. Horses were sick. Ranch had too much work. But you handed him your service weapon. You know, a jury just might call that accessory to murder. See, now that, right there, those are threatening words, Miss Conley. I came out here hoping you'd listen to reason. Take the plea deal. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're beyond that point now, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Your face is bleeding. I'm an arm sheriff. Great. What, you gonna kill me? You gonna kill every rancher that gets in your way? Was it your plan to talk my dad into killing himself? Or was it just hope? You know, making this look like self-defense is a pain and a lot of paperwork for me, but that's the way you wanted to play it. Put the gun down, Sheriff. What the hell are you doing here, Carl? You know, uh... I found this phone next to a, a dead Brock McCarty. It's U.S. military. U.S. military? Well, that's her phone. Looks like you just tied Miss Connolly to the murder scene. Make the arrest deputy. Uh, it's gone too far, Sheriff. another dead man out there you know. self-defense carl yeah i know it was hell we don't know anything yet carl make the arrest deputy do as i say no i'm not doing what you tell me anymore sheriff now you're under arrest i'm under arrest carl you disappoint me Your feelings for Miss Connolly cloud your judgment. This has gotten way out of control. I'm sure we can come up with a solution beneficial for both of us. You're like a son to me, Carl. You hear me, Carl? Carl. Carl. Uh, is Carl dead? He needs medical attention, Sheriff. We can't do this here. He knew better. He knew his place. Now, don't move for his weapon.
Oh, that was some crazy shit. I, I got it all. No, the sheriff's in the bar. Call an ambulance. <laughs> Can I get you anything else, Sheriff? Just the door, Daniel. Thanks. You got it. All right, Matthew Birdie Hudson. How in the hell did you find that out? <laughs> no matter how I found out. Make you foreman. And you'll take care of this place for me. Deal? Yeah, six months without you bossing me around is going to feel like a vacation. Don't pretend like you're not going to miss me. No parts. Hey, take care of my dad, will you? I'll take care of you. Come back in one piece, okay? Not that I care. <laughs> you're mean. Come on, sugar. Here lies the one who loved us all, and in return, the one who was loved as much. No matter how deep your sleep, we'll always hear you, old friend. Not even death will keep your spirit from running freely in my field. It's beautiful. Although we have had some setbacks in North Dakota, we have similar laws in motion. South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only a matter of time. Does <laughs> the situation in North Dakota affect our reputation?
our story is definitely movie material. I just really hope that overall the message gets out that this could happen to us and it could happen to you. If I wouldn't have my expertise in mental health that I do, I really don't think you would have made it through. Yeah, I don't think if they would have taken the animals, you wouldn't be sitting here with me today. No. Yeah. Love you. Love you more. <laughs> I gotta get out on my from home and go my own way you'll never understand ain't got no plan and that's okay I know I'll be alright I'm getting out tonight you're sick but this town is sick Oh